Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today we're taking a look at the best folding pocket cleavers that you can get your hands on right now in 2020. Let's check them out. Pocket cleavers have been on the rise in popularity these last few years because they're some of the most stylish and fully capable knives on the market today. They're great for both heavy jobs and precision cutting and they're going to look great while you get things done too. From budget flippers to high-end titanium frame locks with particle steels, there's plenty of options out there, and these are the best pocket cleavers you can get right now. All right, first we have to talk about why a pocket cleaver. What jobs are they good at? Now in the kitchen, a traditional cleaver can be used for chopping veggies or breaking down big cuts of meat, but it's a whole different ball game when you're talking about an EDC pocket knife. Basically, we've got a big, broad sheep's foot style of blade that offers a lot of strength. As I mentioned, they're going to work well at any kind of aggressive or powerful cuts when you really need to put some muscle into things, especially on push cuts. And thanks to that low tip, the knife is less likely to slip out of any longer cuts. Think of things like breaking down cardboard, and they're also going to excel at draw cuts, scoring, or cutting on a surface because of that tip placement as well. Plus, they offer a more distinctive and stylish looking alternative to some of the more traditional blade shapes out there because the best of these pocket cleavers definitely make an impression when you open the blade. And speaking of big impressions, this knife I'm holding here really made a big splash when it was released. This is the Gerber Flat Iron. They sold really well, partly because they looked cool, but they also had them priced really nicely, starting at just 35 bucks right now. Now they started out with a 7CR series stainless steel, but this newly upgraded model that I'm holding right here is definitely the way to go. This is a frame locking knife, and you've got a denim micarta rather than aluminum or G10 on the front of this handle right here. We've also got a hollow ground cleaver blade. It's almost like a straight razor in the way they've shaped it, and that uses D2 steel, which is a nice upgrade and a really good bang for your buck in terms of your edge retention, because this does come in just under 50 bucks right now. Now it's been really good to see Gerber responding to the feedback they've gotten on that original model and rolling it into this new version right here. And not just on the materials too. They've improved not just this, but all versions of the knife out there with a few different tweaks. First among those is a repositioned and longer thumb cutout that gives you easier opening compared to the earlier versions. Now in addition to that, they've also added a pinch plate to the back of the knife. It works not only as an over travel stop for the frame lock, but also as a place to rest your fingertips when you're opening the blade so that your grip pressure does not interfere with the opening action. With a nice design and a low price, this is a great inexpensive way to get into the world of pocket cleavers. Now with the success of that model, it was only a matter of time before they released a flipper, and this is it. This is the Gerber Asada. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller than the flat iron, but you can definitely see the family resemblance in the handle shape as well as the pinch plate equipped frame lock on the backside. Also like the flat iron, you've got two tiers essentially. You've got anodized aluminum, this one happens to be red, and that comes with a 7CR stainless steel for 40 bucks, as well as a version with olive micarta and D2 steel for 50. This one even has a nice stonewashed finish on the D2 steel, so it's gonna stand up to scuffs and scratches really nicely. Plus, D2 is not quite stainless, so it does offer a smidgen of corrosion resistance as well, since they've essentially micro-polished the edge in a random pattern with that stonewashing. Now, Gerber didn't phone in the flipping action either. We've got ball bearings in the pivot. They're on hand to help it swing freely when flipped. Now, I didn't mention this on the flat iron, but both of these knives also have a pretty wide finger choil at the heel of the blade. It allows you to get some finer control over the tip and the blade overall. And both of these knives also have a nice wide pocket clip for a highly secure carry in the pocket. Now next up is an entry from Gerber's Crosstown Rival of sorts. If you remember, Pete Kershaw did leave Gerber to start his own company, and this is the Kershaw Static. This actually makes a pretty solid competitor to that Asada. Comes in about 39 bucks, so the price is about the same, at least on the base version. And even though it's a little bit smaller, they both have almost the exact same amount of sharpened edge. Now you've got just under three inches of steel on this blade length, but you have a three finger handle as opposed to a full length handle. However, they have added that finger choil there, similar to those Gerbers. And the benefit is you can get that fourth finger in there for a full handed grip. And yet this knife is gonna fold up smaller in the pocket than some of those longer knives. We've got a deep carry pocket clip that does its part here, letting the handle ride nice and deep so it is truly out of the way when you're not using it. And it is reversible too, unlike the Gerbers, which can only be placed on the right side. While we're looking at the handle here, we've got stainless steel construction with a PVD coating for durability and of course a frame lock to keep things secure. We've got a milling pattern that gives it a high-tech look as well as some traction thanks to the grooves. 
and the blade itself is flat ground from HCR 13 MOV steel, and it's got a really nice flow with the handle. And it also rides on bearings in the pivot, as you can see it flipped open quite nicely thanks to their proprietary KVT system. Now these have all been American companies so far, even if the knives have been imports. And this next one is all of those things as well, but it's a more premium option. This is the Spyderco Rock, coming in just over 190. This was actually their first collaboration with designer Serge Panchenko, and this one really does lean into its straight razor vibe a little bit more heavily. Now the materials aren't too exotic, you've got textured G10 with a liner lock for the handles, and VG10 stainless steel for the blade but it's a definite upgrade in the fit and finish department. This knife really is put together very nicely. The bead blasted blade features a flat grind and a swedge along the leading edge for a little bit of extra flair. It comes wickedly sharp, and in typical Spyderco fashion, it is very precisely ground. The signature thumb hole does provide easy one-handed opening, but of course you can always be a little bit flashier by using your middle finger for that spidey flick opening action. Now just like the Kershaw, this knife carries nice and deep thanks to Spyderco's folded wire clip. It's a really great option for maintaining a low profile, as it really doesn't scream the word knife to those who see the clip on the outside, except of course for other Spyderco fanatics. Now we've looked at some classic companies so far, but I think it's probably fair to say that the pocket cleaver trend has been pushed to the mainstream by the import companies more than anyone else. And the biggest driving force behind that is the Kaiser Sheepdog. And these knives are pretty much the champ of the genre, designed in collaboration with knife maker Chris Conaway of Sheepdog Knives. Now, there's actually three sizes available. I've got the standard one here that has a three and a quarter inch blade, and the mini is even more popular with about a two and five eighths of an inch blade. There's also an extra large version with a full four inches of steel, and it creates a monstrous impression when you flip this one open. Now there's a few different tiers of these knives. You've got the more affordable Vanguard versions, which this one is one of those. And those typically have 154 CM steel and G10 for the handles. Although this one does have a little bit of a carbon fiber overlay on top of the G10 to keep things even spicier. And then you've also got the higher end models like this one that has a fully contoured titanium handle with either a Dama steel or an S35 VN blade. Now the reason that these knives are so well regarded is for one thing, the fit and finish is impeccable, the action is stellar, and the price is not all that expensive compared to the competition. The lines are certainly dynamic and the knife feels alive in your hand too. Really comfortable, especially these contoured versions. You've got a really good working blade on these knives too. Broad enough to take a nice beading, flat ground to slice well enough, and a nice usable tip as well. They've even put a little cutout here at the top of the leading edge of the spine to spice things up visually there as well. And then the stonewash finish on these S35 models is icing on the cake. You guys know I love that type of finish. It really is hard to go wrong with a sheepdog. Now, Wee Knife Company has also gotten into the cleaver game, although through their budget price Civivi line with the mini and full-sized Bull Mastiff flippers. These designs are just as precise as the premium Wee Knife Company offerings. They're just built with methods and materials that make them very affordable. You start around the $50 mark for the three inch bladed mini bull mastiff, while the 3.8 inch blade of the full size comes in just about seven bucks more. Not a big jump at all between the two sizes. Now, while most of Civivi's offerings feature D2 tool steel, these sport a 9CR 18 MOV stainless steel. And that's gonna give you performance on par with a time proven 440C stainless. Now, although it's not quite as broad as that XL Sheepdog from earlier, this knife does have one of the broadest blades we've looked at yet, and that's something that should be very popular with the knife modders out there, since there's a lot of real estate to play around with in terms of creating your own blade shape if you want to do something fun. We've also got fantastic cutting performance on the Bull Mastiff series as well, because it's got something that Civivi does very well, a very thin and consistent sharp edge paired with that full flat grind and thin blade stock means that this should really breeze through your cuts quite well. The rest of the features are as you would expect from a Civivi, but if you're not familiar with them, you're gonna get a deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible for either side, various G10 color options for the handles, a liner lock, and caged ceramic bearings for crisp flipping, although you could also use these dual fullers as a thumb opener if you wish. Now the third import company we're gonna look at today is Artisan Cutlery, and they've got a few options, but in addition to their more premium cleavers, they also compete in the budget space as well with their CJRB brand, and the Crag model is probably my favorite pocket cleaver right now, especially this particular variant, which is our new Knife Center exclusive. Now this comes in at just 45 bucks and it's got a number of upgrades over the base models. They're still excellent, but this one is just on another level. 
Now the first and most obvious thing that's different between this and the base models are the handles. Now with those you can get G10 or carbon fiber, but we've swapped those out and went with a burlap micarta, which is exactly the sort of rugged material a working knife like this deserves. The matte finish on there feels good and it grips well, and it grips even better when you get sweaty, since micarta tends to feel slightly tackier when it is wet. The comfort in the hand is improved even further from those base models as we've had them contour the scales rather than leaving them flat so that it really nestles into your fingers even better. And then the red pivot collar on both sides adds just enough of a pop of color. It's like that little dab of hot sauce that sets things over the top. We've also got ball bearings in the pivot to keep the action great and a liner lock to secure things. We've also had them stonewash the reversible deep carry pocket clip so that it matches the finish on the D2 blade, ensuring that every component of this knife is ready to get down and dirty and look good when it gets to the other side. Now, if you don't like a liner lock, but you like the design of the crag, the standard models do have another option, and that's their new ambidextrous recoil lock. But for my money, and I actually have put my own money down for one of these, our exclusive crag is hands down the best version of this knife out there. All right, that's it for our list of the best pocket cleavers you can get your hands on today, or at least some of my favorites. Make sure to let me know your feedback in the comments, which one of these did you like, or is there something out there I missed that you're a big fan of? Make sure to let us know. In the meantime, if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we will leave links in the description, as always, to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next knife if you're going to buy one of these cool knives anyway. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you all next time.